All right, and now let's look at the verse under we own nothing. We own nothing. Now can we read Psalm 50 verse 10 and 12 from here? The Lord said, all right, Every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. The world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Very good. Now then, we look at First Peter, one eighteen to nineteen. The next paragraph. Now let us read together. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. May God bless the reading of His word. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another new day, and especially this day of the week, that we can come and worship you, be found in thy presence. What great privilege. But Father, as we come, we seek thy cleansing and washing in the blood of our Saviour once again. For Lord, we know we have sinned against you in many ways. May thou continue to show us that we may repent. And Lord, we pray that now you would grant to us understanding. And Lord, especially in this topic about returning what you have given to us back to you. May we truly understand, not with just the mind, but with the heart, that it will change the way we live from henceforth. So help us, O Lord, this is a work that thy own, only thy Holy Spirit can do in our lives. We pray, Lord, that you will work. We ask that you be with the Chinese BBK likewise. Lord, speak to thy children and strengthen thy church. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, last week we said there are two things that the Christian must make clear in your heart about this topic about giving to God. I say in your book, you can put instead of giving, strike it and put returning. Returning to God, right? Now, there are two things we must begin with. You don't begin here. Every time you hear about returning to the Lord, you say, no, I'm giving to the Lord. I'm giving, not returning. What's the difference between giving and returning? Returning is, it was never yours. You're just giving it back, returning, right? So there is a big difference. Now, two things, what are they? The first, actually we just read them. Uh, uh, Shane, two things you must begin here with. First, we own nothing. Okay, the whole world. God says, everything is owned by me. We just read. Everything on this planet Earth, in fact, in the entire universe, God says, belongs to me. All right? So everything belongs to Him. The cattle on the hill, the money in your bank account, everything, God says, belongs to me, although it is in your name. Can you accept that? You must realize that God says that. So everything owned by God. The whole world. Number two, what's the other one? Uh, Justin. Very good. We are purchased, redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Means we, we don't belong to ourselves. You're purchased goods. So can you imagine you buy, you buy something, all right? You buy something and then the thing keeps saying to you, no, I don't belong to you. No, I paid money for you. You belong to me. Now I'm your owner. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to me. All right? God says, I redeem. Redeem means there is an exchange. I paid something and then make you mine. Like the my masters redeem the slaves from the slave market. The slave cannot say, sorry, I, I, I don't belong to you. I belong to myself. The master says, no, I redeemed you from the slave market. I purchased you. And God reminded us, he purchased us with the blood of his son, the spotless lamb. So we are redeemed with a great price. We don't belong to ourselves. All right, we are from henceforth in our mind always remembering I am not my own. I belong to God completely. So number one, the world belongs to God. Number two, you must realize you belong to God. Because you can say the world belongs to God, but I belong to me. So God, you don't touch me. You don't touch my life. 
You don't touch the things that I have, God, because I don't belong to you. Now, if you belong to God and the world, the entire universe belongs to Him, then everything that you have, including yourself, everything that you have, your money, your possessions, can you see what I'm drawing? Your house, your car, everything that you own. Just think of anything. Your degrees, your education. God says, everything belongs to me. You live in this world that I belong, that, that belongs to me. You purchased by me. Then therefore, everything belongs to me. Now, first of all, the Christian must accept and understand that God said that. Then having understood that, then you're ready to now move to the next thing, which is point number three, all right? At point number two, 204 in the new, uh, 186 in the new book, all right? Someone told me, oh, I, I can't follow because all the new book. 186, 186 new book, so I made it a point to remember. 186 new book, 204 old book. We are stewards, point number two, all right? Point number one, we've just re revised. Point number two, now you're ready with this understanding to move to, we are stewards, all right, we are stewards. Now let us um, read Romans 4, uh, Romans 14. Now let's read the quoted verse here. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be the Lord both of the dead and the living. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now God explains and summarizes here again for us. God says the reason why Jesus Christ came was to redeem you and make you his. And therefore, you can't live or die to yourself anymore. It's live or die to the Lord. Because the Lord came to save you, to make, him, to make you His. To make you His. This is the greatest belonging, to belong to the Lord. All right? But the concept here is Christ purchased you for Himself. Now, but here, there is a reminder. There is a reminder, having understood this, having understood this, the reminder is we are all now accountable to God. For so then, after explaining all this, so then please remember, Christian, every one of us, no exception, rich, poor, talented, not talented, have, have not, God says, no exception. You're a believer. Every one of us will give account to God. This is called stewardship. Stewardship. What is stewardship? Stewardship means someone gives you something to hold on to and to be used according to what the owner says it is to be used for. So a steward is someone that is just holding on to things, knowing in his heart that this does not belong to me. Whether it's my life, because God can take your life anytime. It belongs to God. The reason why you still have it is because God says, I give you life because I intend to use it for something. So you must realize that. I give you possessions. I give you possessions. The reason why you have possessions, whether it's your health, whether it's physical things that you have, whether it's education that you have, whether it's job, whether it's children, whether it's family, whether it's money. God says, I, all these things belong to me. I put it in your hands to look after for me, to be used for my work. Includes your children. That's why we always say that it is children are an heritage from the Lord. It doesn't belong to you. You are only looking after it for God. So, my friends, God says we are all stewards and, we must, and one day we will give account. 
In other words, God says, one day when you stand before me, I'm going to ask you, I gave you money, I gave you a job, I gave you health, I gave you family, I gave you children, I gave you singlehood, I gave you time, I gave you all this. Give an account of what you used it for. The steward, a good steward, is one who always used everything according to what the master wants. That's a steward. You don't own anything. So, once we understand this, God says, I own everything. I purchased you with my own precious blood and I put things in your hand. You are a steward. I explained last week, I gave an example. If, for example, if the church bought a video camera, is that your own video camera or the church's? This one is yours. All right. I, I think there are some that we bought from church. All right. All right. Pretend this is this video camera is purchased by the church, and then is is used, and then one day we need to use it for another event. Then we say to the video person, or we say to Ichung, all right, make it more real. Ichung, we need the camera to be used for an outing, and then Ichung says, no. I want to use it today. If I want to use it for my own things, my own family, my own outing, that is not a steward. That is someone who is very brazen. It does not belong to you. The Christian must remember everything that you have is from God, given by God for him, for his purpose. You have a car. And then you say, can you help to pick someone? No. It's for my own use. Can you wake up earlier to pick someone? No, my time is my own. My sleep is for me. So no, everything no. No, I, I don't want to pick anyone because my car is new and nice. You know all these students? They're so dirty. They dirty the seats. They leave things in my car. Their feet are dirty. Their shoes are dirty. No, I don't want to dirty the carpet in my car. No, it's mine. No, I don't want to use my money to pump petrol. It's my money to drive out of the way, to do this for church, to do that. No. So it's everything. No, because it's mine. God gives you things to be used for Him. Now, so everything that you have is to be used for what God wants to achieve in this world. Now, you need to remember one thing. God chose to use stewards, by and large. God owns everything, but God chose to use stewards. Meaning to say, God did not intend that the things that He intend to achieve, using things, using people, to grow on trees. All right? God did not intend money to grow on the tree outside here. God intend to give you money, give you possessions, so that you will be His, I put it this way, think of yourself as a walking bank. You know, it's a walking bank. You are a walking bank. Everything that you have deposited in this walking bank, you, is deposited by God. So God intends that it is He will put into this walking bank to be used for His kingdom, to be used for His kingdom, used for His work, used for His people. That is how God intends to work. Can God make money um, um, appear randomly and all that? Yes, He can. But He says, no, I choose to use people who I redeem and make them stewards. That is what it is. So you have to think of yourself, I'm walking bank account. God deposited everything, everything that I have. God intend to use me. Now, that's why you take the next, and please remember, before we move to the next point, we will give an account. Don't think for a moment that you can, at whatever age, you say, I'm just a student. 
or I'm an old person already. Don't think for a moment that you will be excused because God says so, then every one of us, young, old, will give an account. When you meet God, just remember this. This is the future. I am meeting God and God is going to ask, Hello, steward. Anyone call steward? There's some people think I call steward, right? So maybe you should name your child steward. Every time you call your child, steward! Then you think, I'm a steward too. <laughs> right? I'm steward senior. Now, steward. So God says, steward, please give an account. You will give an account. You look at your bank account now, you look at your car, you look at your house, you look at your health, you look at your time, you look at your talent, you look at your degrees, you look at everything God says, these things will be, give, these things are given to you and you will be giving an account. Now next, number three. Now, having understood that, let us read again, alright? Let us read, read again, First Chronicles chapter 29. Let's turn to First Chronicles chapter 29. You can write that at your BBK book. First Chronicles chapter 29. First Chronicles chapter 29, shall we read 14 to 16 together? 14 to 16 together reading. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee and of thine be own, of thine own have we given thee, sorry, verse 15, for we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. Sorry, please read verse 16. Our Lord, our God, O Lord, our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee an house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand, and is all thine own. So now, David prays. David is very rich as a king. But David understands so clearly this, understand, this concept of stewardship. David did not say, I'm king now, God. I will give money, I will give of my money which I took from my battles and I will build you a house for your work. No, David says, hey, who are we? We are just stewards. Everything that we have comes from you. We own, of thine own have we given you. It's so clear in terms of stewardship in David's mind. Then he prays in verse 16. Now everything that we have, that we can give to you, that's what he's able to give to you, able to do, comes from your hand. Is that so clear in our minds? Have you always understood your life in that manner? Have you seen all your possessions in that manner? I have money. No, it's mine, Lord, to be spent the way I want to spend it. Now, but that is another thing I want us to understand. Point number three is about God's work must be supported by God's people. David knew that when God gave him money, gave him possessions, it was not for his own pleasure. It was meant to support God's work. He understood that. Now, like I said just now, God intended to fulfill his kingdom's work through you, through each one of us whether it's physical work, whether it's financial, whether it's um, support of anything, it's through us. Now, number one, we have to realize then that, like I said just now, it is not going to grow on trees. It is not going to be found in the ground. It is found in your hands, the work of God. That is why we do not believe that for the work of God, we should take loans. We don't believe in that. Do you know what it means when a church says, let us take loans, let us take loans to do certain work for God, when God's people are supposed to be the walking bank accounts? 
And everything in the bank belongs to God. Whether it's your effort, whether it's your financial um, possessions, God says, hey, I put it all in the bank, then I put it all through your, then when it comes to the time for the very purpose that I gave it to you to do my work, you say, uh, not giving. Church, please go take a loan. When the people of God are supposed to be the one who God gave to do His work. Now, if truly at the end of the day all are sincerely giving and we cannot afford to do certain work of God, then it was never God's will. But if it is God's will and you refrain, you will give an account. It's like the father who says, Child, you know, child, all right, Eugene tells Phoebe, Phoebe, here is $100. Wow, Phoebe said, Wow, $100. $100, right, Phoebe? You hold it, all right? Because when we reach the shop, you know, when we reach the shop, money is not going to be hanging on the door. The money that I intend to use is with you, all right, Phoebe? We go to the shop. Now, Phoebe, now, Daddy intend to use this $100 to buy this. Then walk into the shop. Then say, Phoebe, give me the $100. It's time to, do, to buy that thing that I intend to buy with this $100 before we left the house. Then Phoebe says, No, Daddy, I intend to use this $100 to buy sweets, lots of sweets and chocolate, my baking stuff and everything. No, it's mine, Daddy. That is exactly the concept. We must understand when we look at what we have, God channels it through you, through you, and when you Refuse and say, go take loan from the bank, please. Don't ask me. Ask the rich people. Ask someone else. You are saying, God, I don't intend to return to you what you put in my hands. It can be service as well. God allow you to be trained in certain things. God, through your life, in your education, in life experience, give you certain abilities. And then when God says, all right, throughout your life, I've been putting this money in your bank account, giving you a job to have salary and so on. And throughout your life, I put you through this, through that, through this, through that. It's to build certain ability in you. By and large, that's how God works. God is not going to zap the ability in us. By and large, it is through life. Now He's building up the bank account. And then when time comes, can you please serve in this ministry? You know, this is an area of your expertise because of your training in school, because of your job, because of your, your experience. Can you please help in this? Now, we're not saying that as long as you have experience, we want to use you. All right? You give, we are not using everybody. But say, Lord appoints you. You're good at maybe programming because it's your training. Can you write this program for the church to do this? No, I am too busy with my holidays. I'm too busy with my job. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Can you please step up to this ministry? Because you have this ability and you have shown yourself to be a godly Christian, please serve. No. So when the time comes, we all say, no, go ask someone else. Go take a loan. This is wrong. God intended to support His work through His people. If a church says we need to take a loan and it is truly the work of God, it only means one thing. You are holding back and you refuse to return to the Lord. So Phoebe says, Daddy, I tell you what, Daddy, I lend you this $100. <laughs> Eugene, Eugene, what would you do? You know? what would you do? That is how we are. The other thing is, all right, don't take a loan from a bank, all right? But let's take a loan from the worshippers. Right? How much are you willing to loan the church, Mabel? $5,000? All right, Mabel, $5,000. Interest fee, okay? Because we take a loan from outside, we've got to pay the bank interest. So we save the church some money in paying interest. So you all loan to the church. If you have $5,000, it was never yours. It's like Phoebe saying, Daddy, I lend you this $100. There should never be thinking and this concept. Lord, I, loan, I will loan you some money, Lord. The Lord says, hang on. Everything that you have, 
the whole world and all that there's therein is mine. I put it there, I put it in your bank account. Say no, my job, my working hard, my studying hard in my younger days, this is why I have this thing in my bank account. How to draw bank? Huh? I don't know. Banker. Huh? Right? All this thing in a bank is mine. No, God, how, did, how come you're saying that it came from you? If God never gave you health, you won't be able to work. Please link it. Those of you who are working, you know. Sometimes you get injured. And if you're working on a daily wage hour kind of thing, then it becomes very real to you. Today I can't go to work eight hours, no salary. You became, it becomes real to you. Then you really realize, seriously, I can go to work because God preserved my health. So please don't think, no, these Christians, they say all this rubbish, it's my ability, don't say it too fast. So Christians know this. God says, you don't want to return? Okay. Don't think that you have a job and you, you could pass your exams. God said, I, let, I help you to pass your exams. I move the heart of the manager in the company to give you the job. There are so many people that could have gotten the job, but I move his heart to give you the job. Please don't think that, no, Lord, this is my education that got me the job because I worked and studied hard, I got good results. Therefore, the others didn't get a job, I got a job. God can remove all these things. It is from God. Everything that happens in your life is always God putting, putting, depositing, depositing things into you as a walking bank account. This is what it means. I am a steward, number one. Number two, why am I a steward? Because God's work is to be done through me, through my giving. Now, whatever age you are, you have to be clear about this concept. That's why I said last week, when you write your will, when you write your will, all right, young people, maybe you're not thinking about will, you have nothing to write. My, my teddy bear will go to so and so. Well, maybe you think that's precious, right? Now, when you write your will, then you will begin, the ultimate test is when you write your will. When you write your will, who are you giving the money in your bank account, in your possession to? Nothing back to God. Everything to friends and re or relatives and friends. I'm not saying you cannot give to children. I'm not saying you cannot give to. But I realize over time that the test when we write our will is where is where are we returning this money to? Where are we returning this money to? I've said that. That will be a true test. Lord, this is really all was yours. I have to make sure that I'm a good steward. Now, we are not the Roman Catholic Church. Eh? The Roman Catholic Church says, please make sure you give all your land, your possessions to the church. But we are saying stewardship is an understanding of these things. But don't talk about will, all right? Talk about now. Talk about now. So that's one. Number two. Number two. Now, so all of God's work is to be supported by God's people. That is why God gave you everything. Don't think, let's go take from someone else. That's why we don't believe in fundraising. You know fundraising? Many churches also have fund, fund raising. They raise fund. Let us cook and then sell tickets and people come and eat. Alright, so this amount, we give it to church. When you can easily give it to church. Tell you what, church, you buy all the ingredients, I cook for you, alright? Then all the all the profits minus what I used to buy produce, the profits fund to the church. When you have much more than that that you can give, I give effort, no problem, but don't ask me to give money. Fundraising. All of us can give, but I say, no, church, you go and raise fund. Go sell this, go do that. When all of us can give. Fundraising. And to fundraise from unbelievers. So shameful. You're telling the world when they come in, the, all the cattle in the hill and all there in this world belongs to my God, but can you please lend us some money? Can you give us some money? What testimony is that? 
It is very shameful to do all those things. I shudder to think of banks. I shudder to think what bank managers are thinking whenever Christians go to a bank and say, can you lend us money? Won't you believe in Jesus Christ? He's the God of the universe. They say, I don't think so. Your God can't even help his own work. Why should I want to believe in this God? Not very powerful. I think the bank is much more powerful than your God. So understand all this concept, why we don't do all these things. Because God say, David understood this. David understood, we are not going to the, to the unbelieving nations to ask for money. Everything that I have, God, I'm king. Everything that I have, I won battles because you helped me to win battles. We have possessions because of you. Lord, it was intended to build this for you, for your work. He understood that. So that's the first thing. Now, second thing is this. Remember, this channeling, you are walking bank account. You are walking bank account. Okay, so first concept, walking bank. Right? Second concept, understand this, privilege. Privilege. Now, let us read here. Uh, in your BBK books, point number three, under God's work must be supported by God's people. Now, know this. Abimelech, the last part of the paragraph, Abimelech, the Philistine king, needed to give an offering to God for his sins. He could not give them directly on his own. He had to give them through God's appointed prophet, Abraham. Do you realize that it is a privilege to be chosen by God? To have the ability to give to God's work, to contribute to God's work, it is a privilege. God says, I don't give this privilege to unbelievers. I don't give this privilege to anyone. Phoebe, how do you feel? All right, that's Elisha, and then that's Phoebe. All right, daddy's going up, then daddy says, Hundred dollars, I need someone to hold this. Who wants to hold this so that when we reach the shop, I'll take it from you and use it for my purpose. Both kids, I, 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 right? Children are like that. I mean, me, me. Because they feel it's a privilege to hold this money for daddy. To be involved in this thing that daddy is thinking about. To be involved. Because, Phoebe, do you have a hundred dollars? No, Elisha, definitely not. On your own, at least. Wow, I can hold this $100 for daddy. And then when it comes, all right, hand over, I'm going to work now. Yes. Do you understand that it is a privilege? We don't see that. Once we see anything enter our bank accounts, enter our life, this is mine. God says no. When, it, when the time comes to return to God, you must realize the reason why God gave me more than others, financially or ability-wise, the reason why God along my life was, was depositing more into my life, financially or, or talents-wise, is because God says, I will, I've chosen to use you. Because Eugene can choose to use Elisha or Phoebe. Both are his child. But I say, all right, for this thing, I chose Elisha. I right, don't keep saying Phoebe because Elisha gets disappointed. I chose Elisha. Then he said, yeah, today is, is me. Children of God, God redeem you. Make you his own. And then God says, I'm going to give you because you have nothing. You can never have anything. I will take care of you, protect you, give you jobs, give you abilities. I will do all these things, my child, so that you have the great privilege to participate, not even give, to participate in what I intend to do in this church, in my kingdom. I chose you to participate. Not everyone who says, I want to, can. Please know that. View that as a privilege, not as God, I am doing God a favor. 
God, let me do you this favor. The church needs money. I'll do you this favor. Like Elisha said, Daddy, I know you need that $100 for this. I'll do you a favor, Daddy. I give you $100. Or worse, I'll do you a favor, Daddy. I lend you this $100. That is how we think. It is when we think of this normal example, we say, what kind of person is this? But that is exactly how we think. The reason why God say everything is mine, I redeem you, then everything that you have, I prepare, and I, it's a privilege for you. I mean, you're walking bank account, it's a privilege for you. It's to help us to understand and grasp and have a perspective of what stewardship is and what our life on earth is. Now, then the next thing. I think we won't have time for the next thing. But we close with one last um, um, example. Privilege. God says you will give an account, correct? But know that in giving an account, God is a very wonderful father beyond imagination because at the time when give, we give an account God says we will all stand at the Bima seat of Christ Bima seat, correct? The Bima seat is where God will call to an account our lives and what we have done and God says those things done for Christ will turn into precious materials. In other words, there is reward. Those things that we do for ourselves, we use for ourselves, burn up, correct? Think of this. I use that $100 example. Did Phoebe and Elisha had $100? They know in their heart, no. Actually, Daddy put it in our hands. And then at the end, when, when Elisha hand over the $100 to Eugene, Eugene takes it to use for his kingdom in the first place. He planned to use it for his kingdom and planned to use Elisha. And then, after Elisha hand over the money, Eugene says, Well done. I reward you. Did Elisha even deserve a reward? No. Because it was, Elisha was just holding daddy's money, money and, and which was meant for something else but just for being a good steward God says I will reward you in heaven it is which, which father would normally do that except a loving father that is God so my friends please know not only a privilege but it is a privilege to participate in the work of God but God says I will reward you so now with that, I ask, um, Frank, people always say, you can't take it with you. Means when we die, our hands are open. We can't take anything with us. Correct? You agree? Yes. Is, you think, you, now after this you think, is it really very true for the Christian? You can't take anything with you after you die. Everything uh, just live on earth. When you really think about it, is it really true? What do you think? I see. What do you think? Can we take it with us? Um, no, physical. physical things we can't. We can't. But when God says, I put in your hands, you use it for my kingdom, and then I'll reward you. Now, I'm not saying, please don't give to God because, God, I hope when you go to heaven, you reward me, alright? I put $100, you reward me 1,000 1, teals of gold in heaven. Don't think like that, alright? But God says, I will, I will reward you. So you can actually take it with you, right? You have $1,000. Lord, I faithfully return it to your use when the time comes. And God says, I reward you in heaven for being a good steward. Not for giving to me, for being a good steward. I reward you. So can you not only, now, I always call this, you know, cash converter 
in, in Perth there's cash converter you can take your things physical things and convert it to cash right you can bring your cash to the Lord and convert it to rewards not because you want rewards I say that again right there's this erroneous teaching can you send you can't take your money with you you can't take your possessions with you but you can send it to heaven ahead of time do you agree this is what God says look at our lives this way we continue next week let us pray